This is an example of how to interpret what a confidence interval means from the frequentist or classical perspective. So here at the bottom, we've set up uh, just a visual representation of the population. And we imagine this repeated sampling thought experiment where we take first a random sample here to get data set one, and then we're going to keep sampling and sampling and sampling. So in this case, uh, data set one, following the table in the book, uh, we get a sample average of 0 0.5. And we're thinking about a very simple confidence interval that just takes the sample mean and adds or subtracts 0.4 to get the confidence interval. So 0.5 minus 0.4 would be 0 0.1, 0 0.5 plus 0 0.4 would be uh, 0.9. Our true population mean here is zero. So that's, this line is at zero. So in this first data set, our confidence interval is entirely to the right of it. It's from point 0.1, positive point 0.1 to positive point 0.9. So I'll draw it sort of like that. And we'll note that this confidence interval does not contain the true population mean. So we can then imagine randomly sampling a second data set from the population. So now we have different numbers, so we'll have a different sample average. We'll imagine that we get 0.2 so again, to generate our interval, we're subtracting 0.4 and adding 0.4. So 0.2 minus 0.4 is negative 0.2. So that'll be somewhere to the left of 0. 0.2 plus 0.4 is 0.6. That'll be somewhere to the right of 0. Uh, in this case, all of our intervals are the same length. They're all 0.8 long. Uh, in general, that's not true, but just to make uh, things a little simpler here. So then we go and we do another draw from the population, another random sample. Uh, maybe the sample mean here is actually zero. So then again, minus or plus 0.4. Get something like that. And so on and so on or lots of other data sets. Maybe we'll do a thousand total. The last one we get 0.3. So we'll get one way over there. Um, sorry, not way over there. <laughs> it's 0.4. We'll get one. So 0.3 minus 0.4 is negative 0.1. So it'll be just to the left of zero for the lower end point. And then going up to uh, 0.7 for the upper endpoint. So we can see for each of these data sets, does the CI, the confidence interval, contain the true value? So for the first one, no, it doesn't. For the second one, yes, it does. For the third one, yes, and so on. For the last one, yes. And we can imagine uh, maybe out of these, or sorry, that should be a, a hundred, not a thousand. Don't want to make the numbers too hard for myself on the video. So you can imagine uh, 67 out of these hundred data samples, random samples, did have the confidence interval contain the true value. So we could think about that, roughly speaking, 
as a confidence interval having 67% coverage probability, or more uh, formally, we could think about this from the before sampling perspective. So before we sample one of these data sets from the population, we would say we have again, roughly a 67% probability of sampling a data set in which the confidence interval contains the true value. So that's a more precise, and again, all the frequentist uh, perspective is thinking about this before sampling perspective. So thinking about the sample mean is a random variable, and that it can take all these different possible values, it has different probabilities of that. And since our intervals are based on the sample mean, as we can say, see, they take different values. So they're sort of random intervals with different probabilities of uh, or sorry, with some probability of either containing the true value or not.